Hey guys, this is Elise. I am a licensed professional counselor and wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. Today's topic is how to know when you are stuck with a stuck point that could lead to full trauma or traumatic grief and mourning and what to do for self-care as well as recommended follow-up steps while using self-care skills. This video is designed for everybody for healthcare workers, first responders, frontline workers and volunteers, the families of, as well as non-frontline persons, because many non-frontliners are experiencing vicarious trauma, vicarious traumatic grief, and even if you're not experiencing any of those things, it is helpful to learn these stuck points so that you can recognize them in someone else and extend empathy to your friends and neighbors who are on the front lines. Now, I will explain what you can expect in the structure of this video. In the first section of this video, I will be sharing examples of stuck points of traumatic grief and mourning. In the second section of this video, I will be sharing examples of stuck points in trauma. In the third section, I will offer a few simple and practical things that you can do for self-care if you are suffering those things. The practical solutions I will offer in this video are not necessarily going to completely resolve the trauma or the traumatic grief. However, it will be beneficial and useful to you so that your traumatic experience do not worsen and will hold you over until you can reach out to a professional therapist. That said, you have to consistently practice these skills. It's not like a magic bullet where one time you do it and all of a sudden you're okay. Lastly, I will offer references. Before I get started, I want to say that in our productive, consumer-based culture, grief has been relegated as a nuisance except when your mother dies. Then you get three days off work and you're expected to be back at work with no change in productivity or your personal affect and professional charm. I'm not interested in a political or cultural critique conversation. The only reason I mention that is to say, hey, I get it. Many of us have been conditioned to believe that grief is for a limited number of experiences, and maybe none of us are grieving at all right now based on those terms. Grief is a, from a clinical perspective, it's a physiological experience that all parts of a person can process in response to any type of loss. All of us globally are experiencing some kind of loss in these times of coronavirus pandemic. You may have the loss of your own family member to COVID. You may have the loss of a friend or colleague to COVID. You may have had a near brush experience with death due to COVID. You may have the loss of what you believed makes for a safe and secure world with a change in how certain processes and experiences were supposed to go and what they were meant to look like to be shared with certain people. You may be learning about yourself or those you live with or those you are observing on social media and on the news and the things that you learn may change your perception of them or of yourself. And these realizations can be really difficult to understand or, or are uncomfortable to sit with. These are all examples of loss, which may not seem typical or normally understood through the framework of what you thought was grief. Depending on the person, some of the non-life ending deaths can be, or losses, can be experienced as traumatic or cause traumatic grieving. And it's all inclusive, it's, it's okay. You're included in my thoughts as I make this video, no matter what type of loss you're coming from. Okay, so let's get started with section one. Here are some examples of stuck points about grief and mourning. You may be feeling any one of these sentiments or have a variation of these thoughts lately. One. Because grief and mourning decreases steadily over time, there is something wrong with me. Two, if I stop having flashbacks or nightmares, I will forget that person who died. Three, all losses should result in the same type of grief and mourning. Four, 
If I hang on to my guilt or anger, I won't have to accept that the person has died and feel sad. Five, the best way to recover from the death of someone is to get on with life and not think about them. Six, grief will affect the mourner emotionally, but should not interfere in any other way. Seven, if I don't feel intensely about the person's death, this means I'm not grieving right. Eight, if I stop thinking about the deaths of the people I've lost, this means that they died for nothing or that I and other people will forget them. Nine, continuing to grieve indefinitely honors a person's death or loss. 10, losing someone to a sudden, unexpected, violent death is the same as losing someone to an expected death. 11, Grief is over a certain amount of time, and that is X amount of days or weeks or months or years. If I don't stick to that amount of time, then there's something wrong with me. If others don't stick to that amount of time, then there's something wrong with them. 12, time heals all wounds. So again, these are some examples of stuck points with grief. That said, um, you may have lost someone very recently. So some of these sentences might not apply perfectly because if someone was, if you lose someone in the recent past, um, since coronavirus has hit the has hit the map in the U.S. or wherever you are, um, it would be very normal to grieve. That's a that's a normal reaction. So um, you know, take it with a take it with the grain of salt. These are sentences and um, informations to consider if you are stuck in grief and traumatic grief and mourning. Now I'm going to section two, and I will share some examples of stuck points if you are suffering from trauma in these times. And there's different types of trauma, just the way that there's different causes for grief. You can have medical trauma, you can have environmental trauma, you can have uh, trauma from war, trauma from an assault, trauma from etc. I do want to say before I get started that you may be experiencing trauma directly due to an experience with COVID related matters in these times. You may also be experiencing the emergence of the following traumatic stuck points due to unresolved trauma from your past and you may experience both. The emergence of unresolved trauma from your past cropping up in these times and lowering your level of function or performance or satisfaction uh, is rather common in these times and that is okay. The reason for that, and I'll share in more depth in a future vid video about this, is because the way that trauma works is kind of acts like a virus itself, mentally and emotionally and spiritually. It mutates itself and spreads to cover other new experiences with the same lens of negative connotations. If we use the metaphor of having an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other shoulder, trauma is like the devil squared or increased to the third power and is overwhelmingly noticeable with the way it colors your perspective and understanding of your experiences, both past and in the present. So all that to say, oh, and also in anticipation of future experiences. So all that to say, you may experience any of the following stuck points of trauma due to direct COVID-related matters or otherwise. And uh, since there's a lot of examples I'm going to give, I'll give them to you according to categories um, of ways that trauma can hit you. So here are some examples. In the category of responsibility, a few negative cognitions you may be stuck in and repeatedly have in your mind may include, one, I am an unloving person. Two, I cannot take care of myself. Number three, I cannot be trusted. Four, I am a failure. Or five, I am weak. In the category of worth, based in relational or social acceptance. Several negative cognitions that you may be stuck in 
or and or repeatedly have in your mind may include one i'm crazy two i am damaged three i am permanently damaged four i am helpless five i am hopeless six i am insignificant seven i am not good enough eight i am not lovable nine i am unimportant ten i am unworthy eleven i am worthless twelve I deserve only bad things. 13. I deserve to be miserable. 14. I deserve to die. 15. I deserve to suffer. 16. I have to be perfect. 17. I don't deserve love. 18. I am different and I do not belong. In the category of worth that is based in performance, some negative cognitions you may be stuck in and repeatedly have in your mind may include one, I am a bad or inadequate person. Two, I am shameful. Three, I am stupid. Four, I am terrible. Five, I am ugly. Six, I am useless. Seven, I am weak. Eight, I cannot do anything right. Nine, I cannot trust my judgment. 10, I cannot trust myself. 11. It is all my fault. 12. I am a bad person. 13. I am a disappointment. 14. I am a failure. 15. I should have done something. 16. I did something wrong. 17. I should have known better. In the category of safety, some negative cognitions you may be stuck in and repeatedly have in your mind may include 1. I am in danger. Two, I am unsafe. Three, I am inadequate or incapable. Four, I am vulnerable. Five, I am not in control. Six, I am powerless. Seven, I cannot protect myself. Eight, I cannot trust anyone. Lastly, in the category of adaptability, a few negative cognitions you may be stuck in and repeatedly have in your mind may include, one, I cannot get what I want. Two, I cannot let it go. Three, I cannot let it out. Four, I cannot stand it. Five, I cannot succeed. Six, I cannot stand up for myself. One of these or some of the aforementioned negative cognitions may have resonated with you as it relates to a traumatic experience or a traumatic grief or a mourning experience. If that is the case, I would highly recommend you to listen to a few practical self-care suggestions in the third section of this video. Let's start the third section of this video now. The most important thing that you can do on a practical level is to stay in movement and especially to do bilateral movement while thinking about talking about your negative cognition or journaling. That means using both sides of your body while journaling, talking, or thinking about your negative cognition, using left and right parts of your body in alternating movement. This skill can help expand your window of tolerance to hold you over for a little while. You can easily do this for free and without the professional help of a therapist. Some examples of bilateral movement while thinking include but are not limited to gardening, running while jump roping, going on a walk, doing diagonal bicycle crunches where your opposite elbows and knees touch each other in alternating fashion, marching, power walking. Another example of bilateral movement while journaling include but is not limited to tapping your feet left, right, left, right on the floor. And the last example of bilateral movement while talking on the phone or in video chat is to tap your knees with your hands, left, right, left, right. That said, it's important to always bring closure to your bilateral movement and verbal or thought processing by giving yourself a cue that you can come back to this thought later when you have time for more personal self-care and most importantly, until you can get in touch with a therapist. I cannot stress this enough. If you are experiencing traumatic symptoms, whether of straight trauma or traumatic grief and mourning, combined with the aforementioned very negative 
cognitions and beliefs, please seek the help of a professional and licensed psychotherapist or counselor who has a background in, chi uh, in trauma. The window of tolerance is a limited frame for each person because of our human limitations. And your self-care skills can only make it manageable on your own for a limited amount of time. And then after that window of tolerance is exhausted, then you may exhibit some trauma symptoms, um, depending on how hard this, this trauma is hitting you as, as, a, as a trauma. Um, though some symptoms can include nightmares, flashback, fla I can't talk, sorry, flashbacks, panic attacks, um, repetitive thoughts about just that thing and they're very intrusive and you, have, you don't really have control over thinking about it and um, having really negative cognitions or beliefs about the world, others, or yourself, finding yourself blaming yourself. Um, and I mean, those are just a few. I think, I, I think I'll have to make a separate video on, on just what, what trauma is as far as becoming a disorder. Um, but anyhow, those are just a few to get you started on understanding when you might need to get some help. Um, and the interventions that are provided by a professional require both science and art of methodology based in research and honed to clinical expertise by extensive training. Even therapists and healthcare workers who specialize in trauma, like myself, if I have a traumatic experience, I cannot objectively and with good quality treat myself. It's like, imagine this, a surgeon performing heart surgery, open heart surgery on themselves. It just doesn't work. Granted, if you're the one person on an island and you have to take leeches out that crawled into an open wound with no medical professionals nearby, you're going to have to get that leech out yourself or face the risk of amputation later. But if you live in the United States or Canada, please reach out to one of the therapists on my business's directory. Many of them are providing free brief therapy to frontliners, and you can find that on www.counselingcarecircle.com slash COVID-19. You're welcome to link up with me too. I'm open to helping as a therapist or consultant as well, and we'll include a link below of um, this video for an initial consultation with me if that's something you'd like. If you do seek a therapist for trauma or traumatic grief and mourning, the therapies that I would advise based on what the World Health Organization and the US Veterans Affairs approves of would include the following. EMDR, which was developed by Francine Shapiro, cognitive processing therapy developed by Patricia Rezik, prolonged exposure, trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy, and I would also add Gestalt therapy, which was developed by w, uh, World War II survivors from Europe, Fritz and Laura Pearls. When you deal with traumatic stuff, the grief gets easier. Grief is never easy. From an experience of the first tsunami of grief, it may ebb and then ebb. The waves become less tall and the periods of the ebbs can get shorter when when you get the when you get some help for the trauma please take your first steps to peace of mind starting with those bilateral movements verbal processing journaling and then finally if it still persists and you're still noticing traumatic symptoms like the ones that i mentioned or from doing a, a google search of the dsm the diagnostic statistical manuals definition and, and list of symptoms of trauma, reach out for professional help. There is no shame in it, especially in this time. It's okay to take care of you. So with that, we have the end of our video chat for self-care and mental health. Please comment, like, subscribe, connect with me here, and I will continue trying to share helpful and practical resources for you. See you next time.